morning, guys. It's Greg and Don here. We're back with another section on the human trafficking. This is class number two. In the first class, what we did is we talked about the typical peel. So we're coming in here, and they would just learn how to peel the hand off, and just that very basic thing. We had some discussion that might be of interest with you on how these girls were brought into being trafficked and so on. But in this one, what we did is we noticed in the second class, one of the things that we noticed was what? Their energy and yeah. the way they came back. Yeah, they definitely came back more excited, less apprehensive, ready to just jump right in and train. And yeah. they came in their workout clothes and they were like, let's do this. The one thing that I really liked is this breathing. Talking about breathing, most of you guys, when you get nervous, breathe in your ribs, okay? People that get nervous, they shallow breathe. When people start fighting and so on, and sport fighting, a lot of people get winded really quick in the first few times because they haven't learned to diaphragmatic breathe. So using your lower abdominals to get the air deep into your muscles is a way that's really important. And as we go, we also have a belt that's designed specifically for that. We'll put a link for that if you want to learn and be able to practice diaphragmic breathing a little better. Yeah. But anyways, talk to me about what you explained to them. Yeah, so I noticed that every time we asked the girls to take a big deep breath, they were up here, their shoulders would raise up and they were breathing very shallowly right here. So I had them start just by putting their hands on their diaphragm and feeling their breath go into their nose until they can push their hands out and feel an extend. So you can do that just by feeling it or you can stand in front of a mirror. Watch your belly expand. You wanna be able to push it out and push your belly as far as it will go. And then keep your shoulders down. We got the girls in their bodies. One thing that I definitely noticed is these girls were not in their bodies. What happens, especially if you've been traumatized, raped, things like that is we disconnect from our bodies as a coping mechanism. These girls were not feeling connected to their body, so I had them start off just breathing into their diaphragm, feeling their own bodies. Then I started having them touch their muscles, the transverse abdominus muscles, kind of dig in and open them up, touch their bodies in a non-sexual way and start owning okay. this space. It's not themselves. sexual at all. So basically okay. looking at putting some compression into your abs and then learning to push your lower stomach out. Okay. Another good way to practice this is nose breathing as well. A lot of people just breathe in through their nose, out through their mouth, and so on. Start practicing going in. Do 30 breaths where you bring it all the way in, all the way down to the base of your stomach, and then hold, exhale as a nice, powerful exhale, but in and out through the nose is a good way to start bringing in, to bring in more oxygen into your body. By doing that, you also train your lungs a little better. So we'll be getting uh, uh, into the breathing stuff. We're going to expand on this as we go. But I think this is a really good start for anybody yeah. that's in any kind of scary situation. Yeah, the other, able to change your breathing is very important. The other benefit is when you can control your breathing and the adrenaline is high, you can bring it back down yeah. and control your breathing. We know this from sparring, we know this from rolling and doing live combat sports, but if you can train yourself to do that in an emergency situation, you can bring your adrenaline down and you can think clearer and I really like that because you don't get a lot of this. You get it in sport fighting where people are getting all the specific and the smaller details. But for you guys that are teaching self-defense, consider doing that because that's one of the first responses. It's a high breathing, that panic, the shoulders get up. And then she took the breathing and added the superman, superwoman. Yep. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the superwoman. So we want to make sure that the girls understand their base and their stance. And we never want them standing like a pencil. Right. And we don't want their legs too far apart because then they still don't have balance there. Right. And solid, feeling all the way down to the ground. Leading with our superhero symbol, hips underneath us. That way when somebody starts coming walking towards us, we have our Wonder Woman stance right here. Nice base, yeah, right nice strong base. And notice the bend in the knee. A lot of people will lock out that front knee. If you lock out that front knee, guess what happens to your back knee? You end up in a triangle. Okay, you lose that ability to balance. If your foot gets too far forward behind you, look what happens to my body. I start leaning in and giving your hair, your face, all this stuff. So find the stance, your natural stance, your regular walking stance should be your fighting stance. If you get back, kick down, and be able, to, that's an important thing, get that spring in your, in your legs. This is for the ladies that have been doing it. Remember to get that. Now, at the same thing, if she sort of noticed me coming in and step back or step forward, she can use that push power, okay? So if she's coming in, give me a little shove right here. 
See how she's done that? If you do it one more time. Now watch what happens here, okay? If she's in this position, she can use that back leg, get that knee bent a bit and push me. She can shove me nicely. But if you kick that foot way back a little so it's kind of extended behind you, okay? Try to push me from here. There's nothing in here, okay? You've already lost your power base. So if you don't have your feet under you, that you can really project somebody, you don't want to be out here, okay? See how this is? I don't want to push somebody from there. I want to get in and be able to push them off. So you need that back foot to be under you. The other thing we talked about is always leaning from our superhero symbol, especially with our eye contact and our energy. Right. There's a huge difference between standing like this your energy down here, this is not very confident, this is not somebody that exudes confidence, but when we're here, shoulders back, Wonder Woman, uh, your superhero symbol forward, eyes up, eye contact, that's different energy. As no though she's getting so in my face, yes. yeah, like if I'm here, now she might do this where she's got coming in and finally mm -hmm. letting that person know, I'm not afraid of you. You don't have to do that, but this is the kind of attitude you want at the same time, so when she's there, she, hey, she notices, notices what I'm doing, okay? Anybody that's attacking, unlike sport fighting where I'm gonna be elusive, maybe change my eyes, fake you, pump fake, when anybody is attacking, when anybody's really aggressive, I guarantee you one thing, they're looking straight at you. If you look and see with their eyes, they're not gonna go and do like a little trick. They're coming to get hold of you. So you know their intent, you read those eyes, you can see what's going on from that. The other thing, if you're looking as guys are describing it, it's that same samurai stance. So we don't want to be leaning forward. We don't want to be street fighting, rear lean, like faint lean. We want to be nice and solid between the feet. As she's saying, no legs, I'm gonna follow right there. No putting your heels together. No going super wide back, which is that kickstand stand. And also, don't put your feet in alignment with each other. Because again, you're swinging off the sides. Yep, so right. we're talking about footwork. It's always better to shuffle Correct. in all the directions. We're always shuffling, we're always moving here so that I never lose Correct. my balance. Side, circle, shuffle. Correct. 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 The basic idea here is that if I'm going to move forward, I move forward with the first leg. Now, a problem that a lot of people think of is we're designed to walk, right? So we walk with our head over our foot. And when you're in a fighting stance, you want to slide. So I don't want to go, I don't want to step like this. I want to keep my head back and slide. So I'm moving forward, the lead foot moves. I'm moving backwards, the rear foot moves. The side leg, I'm moving to the left, the left leads. And then the other foot always catches back up to that natural stance, okay? You need to have your hips, you need to have your legs under you in order to be able to get the torque, be able to get your power raise. Otherwise, you're gonna just be in this karate style straight fighting stance. We need to be able to move, we need to be able to run. Okay, so on the things, we'll do a quick, quick review here. We'll bring it in close so you can see. So she came in, they got a hold of my throat, and we're doing the same side. Now notice right here, thumb goes to the back of the hand. We're gripping over, and getting the meat of the hand right here. So I'm pushing and turning. Remember also that the same hand that I'm grabbing with is the shoulder that I'm moving with, okay? So I'm going here, bring that shoulder back. Just by moving this shoulder back here, I'm opening up that wrist, that grip, okay? I'm, I'm weakening it. It's gonna be very strong when she can squeeze right here, okay? But as soon as I turn, that makes it less. I can literally just turn right through. All right, so one more time. In, hand goes to the back. We haven't talked about all the things, the eye pokes and everything yet that we're getting into, right? Because it's just a second section, okay? So turning, we've got this. If I want to be safe with somebody, I put it right down into their wrist, so if I don't want to hurt them. If I want to add more pain, I'm going to do a bend plus a twist turn. So I want a spiral motion that's going towards that elbow, and notice the effect. Now. Once I get down below their waist, they're going down. My waist, that lock's going, okay? You've also, as we mentioned, as we're going, this could be coming up at the same time. So I'm coming across, I'm reaching across, thumb is going again, back of the hand, but not into the fingers, all right? I want that pushing pressure that I can use. So as I'm turning, 
arm coming across, the shoulders moving back. There it is. See it right here? Now, we talked a couple options. You can just shove the person and be out of there. I can pull and go out the back side. Now we introduce the, what comes later is a little bit of these lightning locks. So if I come in, I can keep this in my body. I'm not gonna hurt her, but you can drop them nice and easy right here. That's coming in the future. It's just for you guys. Okay. And yes, I can always turn them out and have the kicks or the knees, whatever I want in here. So there's a lot of options we'll be adding. We're going to get too confusing at first. All right, so on this one here, I'll have Donna hold this. We're looking at the head. So let's look so I get a couple angles. Four basic angles, okay? And it's just gonna be depending on where I'm positioned, okay? If I'm positioned over here, a little different than I'm positioned here. The first idea is always, if they're sort of in your face, is to turn them away from looking at you, all right? As I turn them away from looking at me, that hand right here, I'm looking for the palm heel to hit along the angles of that jaw, okay? Then the eye socket, the zygomatic bone, which is the cheekbone, are under the angle line of the jaw. So the first one I'm doing, turn them away, if they happen here, they get back into their stance and they jolt. Now, if I go here and I push, that's another option. I can just be like, get away from me. They're gonna go back for a little bit and you know what's going on by the way they react, whether they start coming at you again or not. But if you're afraid and you wanna get a shockwave strike, which is a really good technique for knocking somebody out, instead of pushing here, all right, which is gonna push them, I use this snap, right, like a snake. I want that palm to catch, and I don't want to push through, I just want to snap. So as I'm in here, you get that little snap, all right? I just redirect the face, snap, and you can see the pack, right? It blows up right here, causes damage on the jaw. The jaw moves, there's a whole bunch of things that can happen, but essentially, in a shockwave strike, all we're doing is making the fluid in the brain with the extrasticial fluid that floats in the head. All you're doing is making the brain have such a shock emotion that it bounces off the skull. When it does that, you have a whiteout knockout. Okay, you'll see that white flash of light. As opposed to if I'm here and I'm in choking, okay, you'll get a blackout knockout when you get the oxygen cut off. Okay, so this is a nerve based knockout. Second one, driving across. So if they're on my face, I'm sort of this side, okay? I'm pushing across this way, that hammer fist. Hammer fist is a super powerful strike, but you really want to generate it around this knuckle area. See that? So as I'm bringing it in, I'm turning their face anywhere here, anywhere in by the ear is very effective, but anything I'm doing. Now, when you're doing a hammer fist, try not to do this, okay? See how it's I'm whipping like this. Power hammer fist comes from locking that shoulder blade down and turning as a unit. So I'm turning my hip as I do it. So I'm here, when this comes here, I'm pulling through and it's got a lot of power without having a lot of strength. So you're not using your arm, you're using your torque. You're twisting power. So just like you're being stretching, you're just turning here, but keep that elbow bent a little bit hooked. This next one is where I'm pushing the head back, okay? So I'm making them look up into the air and I'm coming in with what they call a chin jab, okay? So as I'm pushing back, I just open that up. I can get under the nose. Just watch that you don't get to the, around the teeth, okay? Also eyes and stuff are very nice to poke the eye and push back right under that jaw. So again, put there in my face. I push that up, boom, really tall guy, okay? And then we're here, the other next one is Somebody started getting ready, and you start to notice when they come and they start looking down here, they're getting ready to either shoot, okay? So this one, as well, I'm just pulling, I want to get off, I'm going to come in, I'm going to pull the head down, and I'm going to be looking for the occipital bone, which is the bone right at the base of your skull. And then I'm going to also go with a wide grip, so I'm hitting, clamping, so I, I almost had a grip here, so I could push them off. But this is just that sort of person that's, looking, they're in your face, they're like, come here, come here, we're dealing with that type of guy right now, okay? So I just pull down, and just from here, striking here or striking here, I'm going to sort of do an Olay. So as I go, 
I'm clearing myself out here. I need to feel how it caps the basilar bone area. So it's here, boom, and I'm just clearing myself. I'm not trying to get into, you know, we're not into shooting and stuff, you know, this type of thing. We're into just going right now, clear, get yourself out. Again, here, if she was to take this jaw, she could push it up, right? So on this way, she don't, don't just think she could take this angle. This is still a strong angle. So she adds a little bit of an angle and then comes under with that palm heel, that's done. And this effect is a little dangerous because when they go, boom, and you strike somebody here, all right? Their head goes back, and I don't know if you've ever been on a roller coaster and lean your head back or anything, but once you're there, you no longer have the option for the break fall, okay? So it's kind of a boom where she's popping that snake, boom, yeah, <laughs> just like that. Doesn't take much, and that's, that's good to go. If she just wants me out of the way, she can just move my face away, okay? And then push up me away with her other hand as she takes off, okay? Good idea for understanding where to strike and how to strike is wherever you make that contact in my face, go to strike your own hand, but just before the hand gets hit, move your other hand. Boom, right there. And if she just wanted to move me away, she can go as she's taking off in the other direction. One more review of that. If she's just here and somebody's talking to you, okay, and she's just not comfortable, she can just move them off, right? If you feel that as she just moves me off, I'm like, hey, stop it. And they're like, they know that you're being rude. But if you go and do that same thing and move it off and you feel that tension in the neck, that's when you're ready for that second strike to come through. Very nice, all right? So if you feel that tension, practicing, boom, and you feel that anchor, pop, and that tension generates that shock wave. It's gonna go through the head, make that brain bounce off the skull. The next thing we went into is probably one of the most important things, and it's positioning yourself for safety, okay? Somebody walking towards me, a good way to practice this is if she's walking towards me and I just move and start walking backwards, all right? In boxing, we have a thing that we call the bump. So when we walk in, that moment that we hit that shoulder, that's where we turn into the fight position, right? If I was walking and she bumped my shoulder, this creates this movement, all right? It's a position that you'll learn later on. So they sort of get within the elbow or able to reach you very close into your personal space, right? All I'm gonna do is just step outside, I'll go both directions. So I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna turn to face the same direction as them and I'm gonna capture this elbow, okay? On the, with a C grip. As soon as I'm doing this, I wanna step behind them. So as soon as I turn, I slide behind them. Now, from here, see this position right here. If I'm down here, she can just whip her arm out. All right? If I'm down here and she turns back to come towards me, I can control her. Now, a couple of things. If my arm's out over the side, way over here, and she bends that elbow, I have to have strength. But if I go here and tuck this elbow, rather than elbow out wide, elbow inside of the wrist, in front of the body, then that, even without me anchoring right here, you can see I'm pretty anchored. If I need to get back into a Wonder Woman, we're here, okay? If she then, tries to roll backwards, okay? I can use my elbow right out here, all right, to block. She comes back in, I can either capture. Now, if she goes overhead, try to release, I can just grab, re-grab. She goes overhead this way, I come back in, and I get back to that same position. So those are four basic things on your position of safety. So again, sort of the really end of talking to you, it can be just somebody that you don't know, and they're too close, a total close talker, and you just step off and I'm behind and I'm not squeezing hard. She's not feeling like I'm aggressive, all right? She's just feeling like I'm in contact. So as though you're at like one pound of pressure, you're not walking all the way across the street, she has done it. And as you guys, we use this in our bouncer training and security training, because once I'm here, I can then take that control, flip them into all kinds of stuff and so on. But right here, this position, she turns back towards me. If I'm here and I'm holding that, she turns back this way. I use that elbow, okay? I can also pull them back in and deliver. So one more time, she's just getting close to me. I'm awkward, I'm in. I'm just showing you the angle. See how I'm slightly behind? I'm not out here because when I'm out here, they're gonna be able to get me. So again, from this position, 
I don't want to get out in front of them because she's going to get behind me. All right. So what I want to do is as I'm coming in here, I'm stopping, turning, and I'm in. There's a slight slide in behind. So as she pushes back in, and I notice that she's trying to turn and, and maybe throw a strike towards me, I can use this. Once I know that, boom, we can go right there. We're not talking about, we'll get into the more violent ways of stunning and doing knockouts in the future. But with right now, just think of a strike going to turn their face away. You don't have to make a fist, and fist guys are not nearly as strong. No. Fists are for sport fighting, okay? Palm heel, two bones that are really strong. Your radius and your ulna right here, these are two long, very strong bones. If I hit somebody with this, it's, it's much harder than I'm gonna hit when I'm hitting here because these are thin little bones in your hands, okay? They can shatter, and as we were telling the girls, it takes a long time of training to be able to deliver a proper punch. And all the even boxers will tell you, when their hands aren't wrapped, they're gone in fights, they get that boxer's fracture where you break your hands quite easily, okay? And we'll talk about ways in the, in the future that you can do stuff that'll make your fist more of a street fist, a bare street fist, rather than a boxer or this type of angry fist. Or, and you can't use this street fist in a, in a natural glove because you have your fingers cold, covered over or you got stuff interacting with your fingers, okay? We'll get into that. All right, so we went through this section, and if you're still with us right here, okay? The next is we added the peel and then the same thing. So as I'm going, the direction I'm turning, see when I turn, if I turn my hip, look at here. I naturally see which way I should go. And then from there, I can push and take off. See what I'm saying? If she comes up with this hand and I'm going this, you can go like this, all right? The problem is, is when I stretch somebody out and she drops this elbow, okay, I can run into this stuff, all right? So again, when I peel, I want to take that face and go the direction of where I'm gonna put the hand, this here. So one more time, and peel. At the same time as I'm getting a hold of this peel, I'm then turning. Notice my, I'm not doing this, I'm going like this, or bending, I'm, turning my hip as I go, all right? And I can just take it down, try to put those together. So if I'm grabbing this way, whichever one you do, she comes over, turns that hip. By turning her hip, she added that four or five extra inches that you need, especially against guys that maybe, as you know, you can see the difference here in height. She goes to the same side, okay? So as she's going here, she can push here. Later on, she can, when we get into the grappler's position, she can hook that neck and really throw me right to the ground. So, so you can put something in there, deliver knees and so on. So we've kind of tied it up. I think we've got most of what we did. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, we covered everything oh. and talked about our breathing, our footwork, our breathing, wonderful, wonderful stance, eye contact. Eye contact, guys. Another thing is at the end of the class, and we're not predicting, but they were asking about what happens when you have multiple attackers, yeah. because when these girls had pimps or they had other girls on the street, they were coming out like two, three at a time. So we'll be talking about that if that comes up. <laughs> we'll probably, we're very likely to talk about that in the next one. Thanks for checking us out. Please give us comments. Again, uh, if you have any extra funds, we're gonna have a, a thing in the bottom that will allow you to help fund this company that's doing it. So you can look just down below and again, Subscribe and come back, watch our show. Bye guys, thanks. See ya, thank you.